Yeah, so Dancing Squirrel Brewing has a question. Uh, what are your thoughts on overnight mashing at the homebrew level? I just recently started doing it, and I can maintain mash temp all night and love it as far as time savings. Uh, are there any negatives? The, the key is that you wouldn't want it falling out of that particular mash range, uh, that temperature range. Uh, and if it goes too low, you can be getting uh, microbiological growth and whatnot. I don't know. I would be really interested to see. Um, and this is just dumb guy talking, right? This is, uh, I, I'm just talking through the situation because it's it's out of the norm. I would like to know um, uh, a few things off the top. I've not done this myself, but I'd be really interested to see what the pH of that wort is uh, an hour into that process and where it is 12 hours later and the next the next day when, when, you, when you louder it. Um, I'd be interested to see if there's any pH shift. I would be interested to know if there's anything microbiological going on. I know that sounds crazy, but I'd, I'd be interested to know because these are all the things that, that you're paranoid about, right? I would also be interested to know, uh, and this is not something that's as easily uh, measured, um, but yes, you're, you're going to make your sugar. Everything's going to be good. But I, 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 I do wonder uh, over time um, if you can get variations in fermentability. So let's say for argument's sake, you're, you're mashing like in the middle of the typical sacrification range around 152, 154 degrees. Uh, apologies to my metric loving folks out there. I don't have that conversion. I mean, are you pushing that mash one direction or another as far as fermentability um, with that? I don't know. And again, these might be dumb guy stuff, so I'm just trying to sort it through uh, on the fly here. I would be also interested if you're if you're maintaining that mash. My guess is that you're also pumping it uh, in some way, shape, or form, maybe with the rims or something like that, type a recirculation system. Um, I might be concerned about uh, maybe protein breakdown in that, and maybe getting some downstream uh, foam issues um, in a beer, foam stand issues. That might seem minor, but that can be something to consider. End of the day, though, uh, if it keeps you brewing and you love it and you're happy with uh, the process that you're using and you like the finished beer, run it, run it, run it. Uh, I would be, I, I would be curious on the, the pH side, you know what I mean? And, and some of the other things that I mentioned. Yeah. I don't think it's, it's necessarily the, the worst thing. He said, I research for a normal mash time, then turn it off overnight. So then how is the, is the, how is the heat maintained? Is there, is there any heat, uh, that's, that's applied to the vessel? How do you maintain that heater? Do you just have a really baller uh, cooler or something that can maintain that temp? An element, heating element. Okay. Okay. Interesting. What's the, uh, do you know the plus or minus on temperature on when that turns on and off? Is it like one degree? Yeah, I, I would I would be really interested. I, I would be really interested because the first thing I think with the element is, it's on a PID. Okay. So my thirst, my first thought is with the element, is depending on how large the volume is, so you're, you're going to have your element, it's going to be heating the area right around it first. And I'm assuming that element snaps on and it's pretty darn hot. So what you couldn't have happening is, is you could, let's just talk through all the possibilities. Uh, you could be, almost be running like a little mini decoction around a portion of the grain. Now that heat is going to dissipate and it's going to go throughout the entire thing eventually or wherever that probe is. But I could see you having hot spots in your mash where you may actually be generating color. Okay. You might actually be darkening sugars, creating uh, Maillard reactions, and you might actually have some cooler spots in it as well. So it's possible that if you were to probe that mash in various areas throughout that process, you might find warmer spots and, and cooler spots. I would want to make sure the reason why I mentioned the pH thing is some lactose and different things can be pretty resistant up to some pretty high temperatures. So if you're, let's say for argument's sake, your, your mash is at five, three, five, when you start, I'd be interested to see if it was lower, maybe considerably lower as you know, moving through. Um, but yeah, that, that measurement would be interesting, but again, it's a, it's a time savings for you. Those are just some things me riffing off the top. You know, maybe if you're trying to make a Pilsner with ultra light Pilsner malt and make a very, very pale beer, potentially running that mash overnight, you might get some darkening in the mash, maybe just a shade or something. But, you know, if you're chasing pale as possible, I'm just trying to walk you through like the thought process, right? That's where my head goes with it. 
Uh, sounds like a cool setup. End of the day, if it's saving you time, it's keeping you brewing, and you like the beer that's coming out with that process, run it. You heard? How's everybody living out there? Dancing with Squirrels Brewing. Uh, thanks for your uh, thanks for your question.